for unity among all the South Asian communities in this country. And we're here because we're saying to Narendra Modi, stop dividing our communities, stop sending your fascists to create violence on our streets. And we know that that's where it's coming from. So that's why we're here today. Off our streets! in Leicester, we call for peace and unity among all South Asian communities in Leicester and across the UK. We stand together as South Asians of all faiths and none and strongly condemn all the incidents in which individuals have been targeted for their religion, places of worship have been targeted and fake news has been circulated to provoke conflict. We echo the sentiments in the recent joint statement of Hindu and Muslim faith leaders in Leicester who state that we arrived in this city together, we faced the same challenges together, we fought off racist haters together and we collectively made this city a beacon of diversity. We will stop your tyranny. We know you, BJP. We will stop your tyranny. We know you, BJP. You can't hide, BJP. We know you, BJP. We won't rest until we're free. We know you, BJP. I grew up in Leicester, but I grew up with Muslim, Sikh, uh, Buddhist friends growing up. We all face the same racism. The people that committed racism against us had no interest in what our family's faith was. And as I've grown older, I've seen Islamophobia used to divide our communities. And it's, it's absolutely vital that we stand up, that we speak out against Islamophobia, that we recognise that it's a tool of fascism, that we stand by our Muslim brothers and sisters and we say that we will not be divided by Islamophobia. And that's really important at this moment when there are such forces trying to divide us. So I just want to speak solidarity with everyone in Leicester, solidarity with our Muslim brothers and sisters always, and just keep on fighting. Modi, Modi, you can't hide. You committed genocide! Modi, Modi, you can't hide! You committed genocide! Modi, Modi, you can't hide! You committed genocide! Modi, Modi, you can't hide! You committed genocide! Hindutvadi is like, it's a plague that can go everywhere. Like, its potential is much bigger than just what's happening in the borders of India. It has, and has been historically spread beyond that. So I think especially young people, as students, we have the responsibility to organize, to come together and stand for our constitution, to stand for our values, to stand for all of the things that Modi is trying to convince the rest of the world are not part of what it means to be Indian. So it's important to bear that in mind and to be proud of the country that we know to be better, our own people, our own comrades. So. Thank you for coming here and continue to come out and speak out, especially when you're outside of India. It's increasingly difficult to speak in India, as we know. Most of us come here knowing that at least here we can express ourselves as more in our campuses, in our workplace, individually. But there's always power in a group. So come together and speak out, step out, come on the streets. It'll be very, very important. So thank you. I know that um, you know many people in the last few days who've spoken out on social media about what's happening in Leicester have you know seen how the viciousness really of the response by the Hindutva supporters, um, the kind of abuse they faced on social media and so on. And of course, that is not just people expressing their personal uh, reactions. That is an organised phenomenon. And we know about Modi's troll army, the, the uh, Hindutva group's troll army, and how organized that is. Um, some of it is automated, um, and it's, you see the same kinds of abuse repeated over and over again. Um, but of course, um, as, as the previous speaker just mentioned, um, for people who are on the ground in India, there's 
many other kinds of violence which, which are being faced by uh, those who become the targets of the fascism and RSS fascism. And what they seem to be trying to do now is to actually export that um, to the UK. And the reason for this, we think, is to is because they don't actually care what happens to the communities in Leicester. They don't care about the Hindus in Leicester either. What they're interested in is firstly uh, building up Islamophobia, but also particularly building their narrative um, of uh, Hindus being victimized. So they would like to see more and more violence escalating. And we are here uh, to say that what we want is peace and unity and that we are not going to let them divide us. Um, and I think it's worth knowing, by the way, that the, uh, both the VHP and the HSS, which is the overseas wing of the RSS, have their headquarters in Leicester and have done for several decades. So, you know, as we were saying in our statement, it hasn't come out of nowhere. Um, it's not just a matter of a new uh, group uh, of migrants from India. It's something which is actually coming out of people who are very established in the UK and who have a lot of money and funds. And we, we heard about the fundraising that they do through Sewa International. Sewa International raised so much money for the Gujarat earthquake in 2001 and then it was proved that that money went to groups on the ground that were causing that were carrying out the violence in Gujarat in 2003. And again, we saw them during COVID. We saw Sewa International coming out and saying, you know, people are suffering in India. And we saw that lots of people who don't know about the situation were sharing their appeals and not knowing that this is an organization which fundraises for fascists, which fundraises for genocide and activity um, on the ground. We strongly condemn what has happened in Leicester and we think that these kind of actions are rooted in this ideology uh, which is designed to divide the Indian working class which is already united we can see in the case of uh, the, the workers movement, the general strike, the farmers movement in India uh, and we think that this is, this is all these kind of incidents, they are engineered, they are designed in order to divide the Indian working class. The Indian bourgeoisie has an interest in dividing the stars because it can maintain its, its rule through such measures. We strongly condemn that and also we would like to say that in, uh, in the UK especially, if we look at Keir Starmer's politics and how he has appeased, how he has appeased the Indian, Indian bourgeoisie by changing the Labour Party's position on the Kashmir question that's, that's despicable because he has changed the position from neutrality on the Kashmir question, which is anyways not a great position, but still better than what is their current position, which is, uh, is pro-annexation. So all of these events, they are designed to appease, to the, to appease the Indian bourgeoisie, and we strongly condemn that, and we extend solidarity to our progressive Indian comrades who are standing up to this, this despicable regime. Although Modi and the uh, RSS fascists are extremely powerful, there's tremendous resistance going on in India. Uh, we saw the um, Shaheen Bagh movement yeah. led by Muslim women, the uh, really inspiring public uh, occupations of public space against the Islamophobic and exclusive uh, Citizenship Amendment Act. And then more recently, we saw this amazing farmers' movement um, because, of course, Modi is very much close to, um, to the corporates, to Adani and Ambani, who are plundering India and other parts of the world. And, and the farmers stood up to Adani and Ambani and the Modi government and said no, and actually forced him to uh, repeal uh, the laws which would have uh, basically meant a corporate takeover of agriculture. So there's a lot happening and we need to uh, keep on building our solidarity with that resistance, which is what um, many of us, uh, you know, which is what South Asian Solidarity Group 
has mainly been doing. Um, but today we're also focusing, of course, on what is happening in Britain with all of this. Um, and I just wanted to mention that um, a couple of days ago, um, the uh, editor of Of India, which is a far-right Hindutva um, uh, magazine and online portal, announced that she would be uh, interviewing Tommy Robinson about the Leicester violence. So, in case you don't know, Tommy Robinson is a well-known British fascist um, and, uh, you know, ultra-racist. Hindutva groups are modeling themselves on uh, the strategy of the Israeli state. Um, and they are basically um, trying to build up this idea of uh, Hindu phobia and throwing that at anybody who criticizes the Indian government. And they've taken lessons in that, literally, in how to do that uh, from the pro-Israeli forces who have tried to make it so that anyone who criticizes Israel is labeled anti-Semitic. And we saw that um, you know, continuously during COVID of the Labour Party and it's still going on. Um, and of course there are lots of other links between Modi and, uh, and Netanyahu and Israel. Um, you know, they are the um, um, uh, biggest buyers of arms uh, and so on. So there are all kinds of connections there. So here goes the poem, The Price of Gujarat. They said it started with a train, but yet so much to ascertain tires burning and the smell of fuel. What followed was only cruel. Bodies burnt, women raped, Gujarat has been reshaped. The narrative has been changed and the minds have been ingrained. The hatred and the spin go hand in hand and they say, I misunderstand. Sadly, a Gujarat has had a price to pay, Modi and his foul play. Sadly, Gujarat has had a price to pay Modi and his foul play. Modi, we will hold you to the truth. What's this? What's going to happen to the truth? What's this? What's, happen what's going to happen to the youth? The ide ideology is infestating the mind. I'm here to remind you that we've always been kind. Kashmir, Gujarat, Dalits, farmers, and now the hijab, to mention a few. Your goose is cooked. Let's have a brew. Thank you. Mother, be so